Thanks everyone for joining today's webinar. Dominique, you wanna to go to the next slide? Just as a reminder, this webinar will be recorded for future use. Uh, so if you, have type, if you have questions, please type them into the Q&A panel and myself or Simon will try to answer those during the, during the webcast or at the end of the demonstration. If you're new to Sentu, we would like to remind you, you can go to our website at www.sentu.com. And if you look under the Learn and the Webinars tab, you will be able to, to view our previous webinars that have been recorded. So from here, I would like to turn it over to Dominique Pulikin, who will be doing the rest of today's presentation. Uh, thank you, Rob. Uh, so welcome to this uh, new webinar by Sintu uh, with a guest speaker today, Rick Burchett. I will let him introduce himself a little later after the demo when we do this interview of how he is uh, using uh, Sintu Cloud at Turner Construction Company. Uh, today's topic is about uh, work zones, uh, one of the key features of uh, Sintu Cloud on a, a new tool that we recently introduced introduced in the platform, which is a work zone selection on display tool. Uh, so I will go first uh, through a quick demo of this, uh, what you can do with work zones, uh, about 10, 15 minutes. And then we'll have this discussion uh, with Rick about how those work zones are being used at Turner Construction for increased productivity. And then we'll spend a few, a few minutes about new updates on what you can expect from us in the next few weeks. So talking about work zones, uh, what we call a work zone in Sintu Cloud is a folder uh, that contain either uh, scans, models, drawings, or any document that you can uh, upload to or produce from uh, Sintu Cloud, okay? So in uh, the primary objective of creating those work zones was to give a way to organize your scans in various area, areas of interest, various regions. Uh, so that you can easily manage the access uh, by the users to these regions, pro mostly limiting the access to some regions, to some uh, given users, uh, but also be able to uh, organize the scan so that if you need to download or distribute back the scans for, let's say, scan to BIM operations in, 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 uh, in Revit, for example, you don't need to download the whole project. You just need to download areas of interest. Okay, but also uh, uh, associated to work zone are some metadata like nodes, private nodes, issues and crop. And this is where you can do analysis as well. So let me go uh, through a quick, uh, a quick demo. For those demo, uh, I will use uh, 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 data sets coming from our uh, friends at our graphic on patrimon patrimon in Paris, France. Uh, this is a project they did a few years back. Uh, where we have a really a nice uh, set of scans, plus also a BIM model that was created from the scan data. Uh, and also another uh, data set coming from our friends at TruePoint Laser Scanning, based in Toledo, Ohio. And uh, this is uh, also a set of scans, plus an existing BIM model that probably needs to, to some updates. So let me run uh, this uh, demo. The demo has been recorded. Uh, so that to avoid any, uh, you know, uh, internet uh, connectivity issues. So uh, let's uh, play the video. So the first thing I want to show you is how various ways to create work zones. So uh, in this project, uh, I have 103 scans and I already uploaded as well a BIM model. Okay, so first thing I want to do is maybe uh, uh, put scans and models in two different work zones. So let me do that first. So I create a work zone here, call it model. That will create a work zone. And then I will simply drag and drop this model in this work zone. Okay. Now I will also create a second work zone at the root, which is uh, scans. Okay, and I will select all my scans. Like this, like this, and drag and drop them 
into my scan folder. Oh, there is one left, so let me add it as well. Okay, so this is how I created my scan on models. Now what I want to do is organize those scans in various work zones. So for this, I will be using the overview map. I will be taking first uh, maybe a top view of my site. So this is how the scans are being organized, or how, how this, sorry, how this site has been captured. So this is a top view. Let me switch to the X-ray vision mode to give a better view. And this is a front view. So you see those scans are being organized per uh, level, but you also have got uh, exterior scans as well. So let me first put the uh, exterior scans and interior scans in two different subfolders. So first thing I want to do is use a rectangle tool here, select all those scans that are scanned inside the building, go to the work zone tool and click on this button here, which is create work zone on move selected nodes. And here I would call it interior scans. Okay, so automatically all those uh, scans will be assigned to this uh, sub work zone called interior scans. As you can see, there have been 93 of them uh, being assigned now uh, to, to this work zone. And now I can use uh, the new feature, which is a work zone selection tool. Here, what I can do is untoggle, I selected the scan folder, but I will untoggle the interior scans. Okay, you see? And that will leave me only with the exterior scan. So what I can do is use this rectangle tool again. And again, create work zone called exterior scans. Okay. So, uh, so what I'll do next is select the interior scans folder, go to X-ray vision again, go to the front view. Or what I will do is assign each set of scans to each floor, to each level, okay? So again, I will use a rectangle tool, select those scans here, go to the work zone tool and say, create a new work zone called levels one and two and move those selected scans to this work zone. Okay, I can then toggle off those various scans, use the rectangle tool again, and then assign that to level three. Okay, pretty easy. As you can see, I have now assigned my 93 scans to uh, various uh, six different uh, work zones. And uh, this is pretty cool. I can select only one of the work zones. And everything I will do now will belong to these work zones. I can, again, let me go to uh, scan mode to see the content here, go to the surface mode. So let's say, for example, I want to do a, a measurement. Okay, so I can add a measurement, can measure the height of this pillar. Okay, save this measurement. So this measurement belongs to level five. All the same, if I create an annotation, okay, create an annotation here, could be a note, a private note or issue. All these annotations will belong to this level five as well. To be checked. Okay. And for example, if I go to level four, of course, I will not see those annotations on measurements. If I go back to level five, you see that I have now added the one measurement, one annotation. And of course, if I click on the root of the project, I will also see uh, this annotation and measurement since they belong to a sub uh, folder that has been selected, which is level five. 
So two interesting aspects about those work zones. The first one is I can manage who's going to access those work zones at a very uh, deep level. So let's say I want subcontractors to see level 5 only. I will select this level 5, go to members, add member here that has, let me add my colleague Alex here as a BIM manager, surveyor, engineer, or whatever, or export only, viewer only. Okay, so by adding this member to this work zone, Alex will only be able to see this level five. Okay, uh, that, is a, that is really a, an important aspect. Another one is that if someone needs to work on, uh, let's say on a scan to beam in Revit with this, uh, on this uh, level five, uh, I will go to the data tab. I will select all those scans belonging to level five. So 12 scans only. And I can export those scans using scene to connect So uh, key messages here, those uh, work zones or sub-work zones, there is a best way to organize your scan data to make sure that you control who's going to access it, view it, download it, share, or enrich with measurements or annotations. So uh, think about the best way to organize your projects uh, in Cinto Cloud using these, uh, these work zones. You can, of course, uh, delete uh, folders, in which case uh, the content will not be deleted, but will be reassigned to the parent folder. So very important to know. Uh, you may want to rename uh, those folders as well, give a description. You can even assign a picture to each one of them so that when you go to the thumbnail view, you will have a nice cool picture of each work zone. So now I want to show you the power of this new work zone selection and display tool that we have introduced lately. So when I go to the uh, overview map or the 3D view, uh, we added those uh, check boxes on the left hand side of the number of scans. Okay. And that will allow you to select the scene content that will be displayed either in the 3D view or the overview map. So let me select level five, okay, as an example. So I just selected those five scans. Uh, let me switch to uh, surface mode and eventually I will add some backface curling as well to see the inside of my scan data. And now let's say I want to do a comparison to the BIM model. So what I will do, I will add the model to the scene selection and that will upload the model on top of the scans, but only the model on only those level five. So if I go to the scan mode now, I will be able to compare uh, my scan data to my BIM model, with, uh, which is one of the cool features that we have in Cinto Cloud. Okay, comparing scan on BIM. And this is only by selecting level five on model, okay? Now, what you may want to do as well is uh, also work with this. the same selection you did in the 3D view will also be valid in the overview map and also with the work zone tool. So everything that you have been uh, selecting in your uh, uh, work zone selection tool on the, on the project explorer side, will be also mirrored in the work zone tool here, where you can still toggle on off the various scans or models you have in your selection. See? Now, let's say you want to do a measurement between two floors. Okay, I will select, I will remove the model here, select this floor only, Maybe go to the X-ray vision, take a, a front view, orthographic front view of it. So this is my selection for the moment. Let me add level four. So now I have two floors. Okay. And what I want to do is maybe make a measurement that, that we go from uh, the, the floor of level four to the ceiling of level five. Okay, and again, this measurement, since I selected level five as a reference work zone, this measurement that I will be doing will belong to level five. So let's do this. Let's go to scan mode here. Okay, so now I'm in scan mode. Let's go to the surface mode. 
So I am in the scan mode and level four now. And what I want to do is uh, make a measurement that will go, as I said, from the, the bottom here. So go to the measurement tool, make a measurement. Let's go along this pillar. Okay, go up to, and let's find a, another scan here uh, uh, above that will take me to this level five and I can still continue my measurement, okay? So I can save the measurement. Now, if I look at the, the, the 3D view of this, let me switch to, auto, to perspective mode. Okay, let me select this measurement and you will see that this measurement goes from the ceiling of level five down to the bottom of level four. Okay, pretty cool. Now, uh, let's say uh, one of your colleagues wants to see this measurement, okay? He or she uh, will go to this level five again. Uh, we'll click on the annotation tab. Sorry, sorry not the attention, the measurement tab. Uh, we'll click on the measurement and by clicking on the measurement, uh, he or she will be put in the same viewing conditions that was used during the creation of this measurement, okay? Uh, so uh, by clicking on the measurement in level five, I will to automatically toggle level four since level four was used uh, for this measurement as well. Of course, if your colleague has no access to level four, uh, he, he will be, or oh, he, he or she will be able to see the measurement, but the, the level four will not be displayed. So net, now uh, let's move to another project. Uh, this is uh, our true point laser scanning project. Uh, on this one is uh, various data types. So we have scans, of course, uh, they've been organized in uh, three sub work zones, east side, north side, west side, but we also have a, a 3D model, a BIM model, and uh, a 2D drawing. Uh, the 2D drawing was uh, uh, update, uh, uploaded to SintoCloud via a uh, Navisworks file via BIM360. We also have a sitemap. So if I go to the 3D view, you see that we have here uh, a sitemap, which is a new feature that we introduced uh, a few weeks ago that will give you the context as a 2D background. It could be a Google Earth view, it could be a former blueprint that you scan. Um, let me get rid of those uh, various notes on measurement icons. Okay, and uh, so this is really uh, an interesting project because of all these various data types. So what I can do, for example, is select the east side as a reference work zone. So that will stream those various scans from the cloud let me switch to uh, let me sorry let me switch to surface mode and activate the back face coding so that we can see the inside of this data set now let me add for example uh, the 2d drawing as well see uh, let me add uh, maybe more scans like north side but also west side. Well, eventually, of course, I can add the beam model as well. Let me remove the beam model now first for the moment. So let me do a quick uh, scan on beam comparison. So selecting a a scan in this area. Uh, let me switch to this uh, viewpoint, oh, not even to this viewpoint, okay? So what we have here is a scan data and we also have the 2D drawing. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed that, but in our navigation map, which is at the bottom right here, we know you now have the possibility to select which display mode you want to use as a background, either the scan color, the 2D drawing, or the sitemap, if there was a sitemap in this work zone. Okay, here, in this case, we use a 2D drawing 
to locate the scans in 3D space. So this is what you see from the scan data. Let me go to the comparison tool, select all scans, all models, and then I can use a visual check tool to go from the scan only, which is the as build conditions here, to the reference, which is in this case a 2D drawing. And you can clearly see that there is a mismatch because the, the real door is off, or say the, let's say the, the drawing is off by one foot, roughly, uh, to the real door, <coughs> which you can also see by adding the 3D model. See, by adding the 3D model, I will be able to compare the scan to the 3D model as well and activate the comparison tool, adjusting the distance adjustment. And then you see that this you have got the same visual information of what is off between the BIM model and the scan data. Uh, so this is uh, what I wanted to show you uh, about the, this work zone tool. Now uh, let's talk with Rick at Turner uh, about how they use it uh, uh, in their company. Uh, Rick, uh, do you mind introducing yourself on uh, about Turner a little bit as well on what you do, why you selected Sintu Cloud? Yeah. So thanks for having me, and I have to say I hate it when I learn something. So. <laughs> Just watching your watching your uh, your video there, and I was like, oh, I didn't know about the the using the rectangle tool and and creating uh, work work zones from that. So I wrote a note. I um, so yeah, uh, my name is Rick Burchett. I'm the VDC project manager for Turner Construction, um, working on a pretty pretty large project right now. Uh, my background is over thirty years plus as an architect, and over twenty years plus as uh, BIM VDC world. So. Um, why we chose Sintu. Um, this project has a contractual obligation to turn over scans. And we have our own internal scanning group. They produce a lot of scans. And they're out, you know, every day shooting anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 scans in a day. And we were struggling trying to find a way to have a clean turnover to to the client um we found that the sin2 platform was perfect um the scans are very large data um comparing that to the active model in a way that they could do and not have a background in them or not have a background in bdc um sin2 solved that whole problem so now we're able to um you know achieve that contractual obligation but Send two went further for us, and especially now with the the work zones. Um, each so it's a campus style project. Um, there are six buildings averaging about four hundred thousand square feet per building. We have to divide that building up um, so that the file sizes don't get too big. And our field team, our engineering team, they've got to be able to look to make sure that the construction, the installation is going according to the model. Um, when they do that review, we were struggling with file size, pushing very large models up, comparing that to very large scans. And having the ability to turn an area on and compare that to the scan. And then when we got close to the edge, let's say from area one to area two, we were noticing that you know it was it was difficult but now with the work zones we can just flip on area two and that model shows up um and we're able to we're able to do that comparison um do that check and it's it's just been amazing the the proficiency and the the fluidity of being able to to do that comparison now and making sure that what we're putting in the ground is is what the designers and the architects and everybody designed Okay, so so you really benefit from uh, this uh, new capability to switch on off the elements of the scene by selecting the right walls on right. What what? How did you do that before that, or how did you manage to compare with uh, BIM models before we had this capability? So um, starting way back, it was you know we had to upload the entire model. 
Um, so we uploaded the entire 400,000 square foot model and looking at a, a singular scan, you know, it, it's like uh, the needle in the haystack kind of thing. Um, so we then went to the drag and drop method where we could move models around. Um, but the, the, the less proficient users, they, they were like, well, I couldn't see anything because I got in the model wasn't there. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, because it had been moved, somebody else is, was using it to look at something else. So the, the training curve, the learning curve basically flattened itself out with work zones. Um, because now it's like you said, it's just basically a flip a switch on and off and they can compare any model to any scan at any time. Wow, that, that's really interesting. Uh, and uh, so you mentioned that uh, at the end of this project, the owner will need to, uh, to get all the data that, that, that's not only, I would say, the scan, but all the annotations eventually, all this kind of metadata you added to the project or just the scans? Yeah, so it's even further than that because we have the ability to uh, you know, attach it to um, another software um, uh, through, through Navisworks. Um, BIM track so that we can track it all there. So all of that data and even the historical data being able to look at, okay, this is where the project was, you know, in, in 2020 and this exact point, if we go back out and scan it again, three or four, five times later, they can go back and look at the historical data. So yes, packaging this all up and giving it to a client that is not, um, scan savvy not BIM savvy being able to to get that information to them in a in a in a, in a neat little bundle um so they can actually use the project so when they go back to retrofit or they want to go back to to add on to the buildings they can go back through and look at all of this data and it's not you know we don't have to carry over six or eight hard drives and be like here's your, here's your scans so yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's really developing itself into a very efficient workflow for us at this time. Excellent, Rich. I don't want to take too much of your time. Thank you for uh, this uh, this talk. And uh, since we said it will be only thirty minutes uh, webinar, I have a few in more information to pass. So, anything you want to add about us uh, into cloud on? Uh, would you recommend this product to uh, any other uh, or people that are listening today? Um, actually, I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, I don't know about specifically who's who's on, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I've it's uh, I've seen a lot of software over the thirty some years, and very few of them have really impressed me. But I have to say, Sin Two is in that category um, with with something that is super simple to use, um, super simple to hand over to the client. Um, you know, I'm excited to see, you know, what's coming for Sin2 in the future. Um, but yeah, thank you for having me. Okay, thank you very much for uh, your time. And uh, let's, let's move on. Uh, just uh, two or three minutes more, a few updates from uh, Sin2. Uh, so we will be starting the beta uh, next week. Uh, 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 support, so uh, about the uh, import of indoor mobile LiDAR uh, data. Uh, that are coming from Navis uh, VLX, Navis M6, or blk to go or uh, GeoSlam uh, stuff. So uh, if you're interested, uh, please let us know. Uh, the goal is to restructure and structure data and be, have the same kind of uh, user experience with this kind of data that you have today with static scans. Uh, also, as you know, from a few weeks now, uh, we can upload uh, uh, panoramic images as well, uh, as long as they are uh, geolocated and oriented. So we don't do the orientation part, we don't do uh, the alignment part. So what we're expecting from you is a uh, so, so list of uh, spherical images together with geolocation and orientation. So what is uh, what was uh, uh, before we, had, we were expecting a, a CSV file, that you would give us giving the XYZ plus orientation. So what we have done recently is that we, we made it simpler uh, in order to, for you to, be, uh, to have a much easier way to bring your 360 pictures. Uh, we just uh, changed those quaternions to a simple uh, heading value. So uh, again, starting next week, you will be able to upload your panoramic images in the, in the, in the platform uh, in a much simpler way, we expect. So let us know if you're interested as well by that. 
Uh, all, uh, also, we have now this uh, SYN2 API uh, ready as a beta version 1.10. Coming soon is version 1.11. Uh, this is about streaming those high-resolution 3D meshes in all the platforms that are than our own uh, Cinto Cloud. For example, in those uh, Unity or Unreal uh, game engines, with the goal to create very rich scan and beam experiences by streaming live, uh, you know, mesh-based scan data in your uh, in your uh, game engine, and be able to uh, enrich uh, this uh, mesh-based scan data with your own uh, 3D data, your own 3D animations, uh, simulation, like for example, our friends at uh, CRM Solutions, are they are using their platform, Unity-based platform now to uh, add, uh, you know, models, uh, avatars uh, to your scan. So on this is done live by streaming the mesh from Cinto Cloud. So there is no need to prepare or to turn your mesh uh, your scans into a high resolution mesh. This is already done. So you don't, it's, a, it's, it's working with a, a single click of a button. Okay, if you're interested by this capability as well, let us know. And last but not least, uh, we will have uh, next webinars coming in the next few weeks. The one of the first one will be uh, uh, the connectivity to Procore. Uh, so you're, uh, we are completing the integration now with to the Procore platform. So you will be able to push your uh, issues uh, to the Procore platform as observations, uh, uh, cloud to cloud, okay? And uh, also we will do another webinar around indoor mobile LiDAR data import. Uh, that's it for the news of the day. Uh, do we have any questions uh, that we can take, Rob, Simon? Yeah, so, uh, so we had one. I just wanna make sure everybody kind of understands this. So the question was, is how can I copy uh, scans from one work zone to another, or how can I copy a model from one work zone to another? Uh, unfortunately, this feature does not exist yet. We cannot copy scan, we cannot copy model in the platform. The only way to do that will be to upload a second time those scans and these or those models. Uh, this is definitely something we will be looking at uh, very, very uh, in a short time, but uh, today there is no other way than to upload a second time. And then just, just one other one that came in, and I, I think you addressed it, but if a user has access to only one of the floors involved in a measurement, what, what will that user see? So like you showed in your example, you had floor four and five, but maybe the user only had access to floor five where it was actually the measurement was stored. What will they see uh, on the other end? Oh, they will see the, uh, the scan data of the, of the wall zone they have access to. Okay. Mm -hmm. They will see, but not uh, the one they don't have access. Absolutely, access they to, will correct? not. Yeah, exactly. But they will see a measurement going into the uh, into the nowhere space. Okay, but uh, yeah, uh, so they will see the measurement, but they will not see the scans. In fact, gotcha. Okay. Great. Uh, I, I think that's really all we got. We want to give everybody back some of their time. Um, once again, appreciate everybody joining today's webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at www.sin2.com or you can email us at sales at sin2.com or contact at sin2.com. Thanks everyone and have a great day. Thank you.